Mighty Visna is a viral disease of sheep. The terms Mighty and Visna come from the Icelandic language, Mighty meaning laboured breathing and Visna meaning wasting, which tells you a lot about the clinical signs that this disease can cause. All ages of sheep are susceptible to infection, but they can appear healthy for a long, long time, for years after infection because of the long incubation period of this disease. They carry the virus for their whole life, but they do produce antibodies which we can detect in a blood test. And it's predominantly a lung disease and it causes inflammation in the lungs. And these lungs here are probably one to two times heavier than normal lungs and they're much bigger than normal lungs. So because the virus is present in the lungs and in the blood, spread from sheep to sheep can occur in droplets from the respiratory tract of infected sheep if they're in close contact with other animals. It's also important that it, you know that it spreads in colostrum and in milk and you could also transfer it yourself from infected sheep to non-infected sheep in dosing gun and needles. There may be a risk from semen, there's not very good information about that. And anything that creates high stocking densities, housing and intensive management makes it easier for the virus to spread and increases the rate of spread. So following the introduction of Mighty Visna virus to a flock, it can take years and years and years before you're aware that it is there. And all along during this time, it is quietly spreading from sheep to sheep. And although I've said it's a disease that affects the lungs, the presentation can be very, very variable. You may see increasing amount of ill thrift in ewes, which might present as an increase in culling rates. Your fertility might take a dip. You might see increased cases of pneumonia in adult sheep or increased cases of mastitis. Often these ewes don't have a good milk supply, so you get increased lamb losses or poor lamb growth rates. It can also affect the nervous system of the sheep, so these sheep may become unsteady or they may drag a hind leg, and it can also affect their joints, so they could also have swollen joints and lameness. So it can be very difficult to say this flock has Mighty Visna just by looking at the symptoms and without doing any testing. A couple of surveys have been carried out in the UK to try and establish how much Mighty Visna is out there. So the original survey was carried out in 1995 to 1996 and over 2000 flocks were tested and 1.4% of the flocks tested positive. The survey was repeated in 2010 with a smaller number of flocks, but, but still a, a decent sample size. And you can see that the number of infected flocks had doubled. That doesn't tell you the whole story. And if you look at the country as a whole, and these are figures from the 2010 study, you can see that some areas of the UK, for example, Gloucestershire and Leicestershire, which are shown in the dark, darkest shading, they can have up to 15% of flocks where positive animals were detected. And obviously 2010 is 10 years ago now, and the likelihood is um, that the amount of Mighty Visna has increased in the last 10 years. So this particular flock of a thousand ewes producing finished lambs submitted a thin U for post-mortem examination and OPA, Yagzikti, which is a lung tumour, was diagnosed, but the sheep also tested positive for antibodies to Mighty Visna. And when we got more information, the shepherd reported that over the previous few years, he had had increasing numbers of ewes with no milk. And because of that, he was losing large numbers of young lambs. He's also, he had also noted that it was now taking lambs one to two months longer than usual to reach slaughter weight. A second ewe was sent for post-mortem examination after she started to drag a hind leg. And when she was moved, she was tending to collapse her front legs. And Mighty Visna was confirmed in her lungs and in her spinal cord. 
So more blood testing was done on ewes in the flock and 70% of the ewes that were tested were antibody positive. 50% of the tops that were tested were antibody positive. And at that point, it was felt after discussion that because infection was so extensive in the flock, that the whole flock was culled after that year's lambs were sold. So it is a disease, as I say, that spreads unnoticed and it can be many years before you can see clinical signs. But by that time, your options for eradicating it from your flock might be very limited. So how can you reduce the risks? If you are adding animals, then ideally source them from MyDivisna accredited flocks. A monitoring scheme has also been introduced recently. The blood test for MyDivisna is, is very good, it's very accurate. So testing added animals is definitely worthwhile. As with all disease, good by boundary biosecurity is important. And you just need to be aware of the range of possible presentations of MyDivisna and investigate problems accordingly, because obviously there are many, many things that could cause poor growth rates in lambs. There are lots of things that could cause ill thrift in ewes. If it is diagnosed at an early stage, then you do have options. You can blood test all the sheep and you can cull positive animals. You could also split the flock and separate the positive animals from the negative animals. But you would have to manage that very, very carefully. Because it spreads in colostrum and milk, if a ewe is positive, you shouldn't keep any of her lambs for breeding. You should never house MyDivisna positive and negative sheep together because it increases the risk of spread. And a minimum two metre gap should be kept at all times. The virus doesn't survive very long in the environment. So if you know there's been positive sheep in a field, if you rest that field for about a week, it should be safe for other sheep. You should never share equipment, so drenching guns or needles and syringes between animals that may be MyDivisna positive and those that are not. And you should always disinfect handling facilities and equipment. Because there is a risk, a potential risk from embryos and semen, you should only source those from MV accredited animals. And colostrum it is high risk, so only source that from MV accredited animals. Thank you for listening. Please get in touch if you have any questions.